very short little Bible reading in which there are not one but two parables. So they're compact little parables. And so as we've been thinking about the parables of Jesus, this morning uh, we actually begin the parable with a question from Jesus. Uh, so I don't know if you picked up, but he asked a question, and the question is specifically about the kingdom of God. He said, what is the kingdom of God like? What shall I compare it to? What is the kingdom of God like? What shall I compare it to? That's in verse 18. We've only got four verses this morning. And in verse 18, this is how it starts. A question. It's actually not how it starts, though. There's a context to this parable. Now, I don't know if you remember... That was close. I don't know if you remember, but there was a context to previous parables as well. Jesus has a purpose as he's sharing this parable this morning. So just for a moment, if you've got a Bible open, it might be helpful to you to find um, the context uh, that is in the preceding verses. So the reading this morning started at verse 18, but if you go back to verse 10, um, in the NIV that you've got in your seats there, it's actually headed, a crippled woman healed on the Sabbath. So just for a moment, let's have a look at what happens to the crippled woman who is healed on the Sabbath. This is the context in which Jesus asked the question, how will I describe the kingdom of God? And so, very, very quickly, a little bit of a run through on verses 10 to 17. It's a Sabbath. Now, we know that on Sabbath, bad things happen for Jesus. Well, conflict occurs with Jesus, doesn't it? Because he does things on the Sabbath that other people won't do. Um, there's legalistic people who are saying, you shouldn't heal people on the Sabbath, do things like that. So there it is. It's on the Sabbath. So we know the context. It's something's going to happen. Jesus is probably going to stir somebody up here. Jesus is teaching in the synagogue. And there's a woman there who's been crippled, it says, for a spirit, or by a spirit for 18 years. So for 18 years, this lady has been doubled over. She hasn't been able to straighten up. Uh, it's not an uncommon thing. But Jesus, or Luke in uh, here, um, indicates that it's a spirit. There's something going on here, perhaps. Um, I'm not sure what exactly uh, is happening. But she's crippled. She's bent over. And she's been that way for how long? couple of days no she's been that way for 18 years and Jesus on that day something has led her to the synagogue maybe she goes to the synagogue every Sabbath I don't know but on this Sabbath she's come to the synagogue and Jesus is there and the two of them meet their paths cross Jesus used to walk around saying the kingdom of God is at hand it seemed to be wherever Jesus was the kingdom of God was in close proximity and so on that day this crippled woman has come on the sabbath to the synagogue and she meets jesus it would appear as though she has somehow gotten closer in that moment to potentially the kingdom of god it says when jesus saw her in verse 12 he called her forward and said to her woman you are set free from your infirmity and then he put his hands on her and immediately she straightened up and she praised god what an awesome story 18 years and then in a moment Jesus is able to transform her that's where the trouble starts because there's religious leaders there in fact there's a guy who's in charge of the synagogue who's there and it says in verse 14 indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath the synagogue ruler said to the people so notice he doesn't address Jesus Jesus has been teaching, and so this guy doesn't address Jesus. He just passively, aggressively makes a statement. He says, there are six days for work, so come and be healed on those days, but not on the Sabbath. No. Hmm. Nice guy. <laughs> anyway, the Lord answers him, you hypocrites. Doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water? Now, ox or a donkey is a working beast. It's, it's like if you're a farmer, you had a tractor. That's your donkey. That's your, your, um, your animal that you use. It actually makes you money. It helps you um, do your living, whatever it is. If you're a courier driver, then you've got one of those faster donkeys so that you can zoom around. 
uh, and deliver stuff, whatever it might be, that's what the donkeys are for. They actually have a purpose, they actually have a meaning, they're actually worth something, they're of value. In fact, for some people, a donkey would be worth more than a woman, let alone a crippled woman. You see, a woman was considered to be something that you owned. And a crippled woman was worse than that because that was now a burden, a drain, something that you had to carry along became a burden for you. Donkeys were actually made to carry burdens and so they're useful. A burden carrier is good, but a burden, not good. But listen to what Jesus says about this woman in verse 16. This burden who needed, really should have come back to another day to be healed. He says, then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, no less, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her? Can you see for Jesus, donkeys down here, crippled woman up here. Um, in the society at that time, it was donkeys up here, crippled women down here. One of the things about the kingdom of God is that it is often upside down to what we would understand it or see it as. But I just love the way Jesus like if you're a ruler of a synagogue then Abraham for you is pretty important and to be a son of Abraham that's what they said isn't it remember Jesus had conversations with religious leaders and they got all upset and they said we are the sons of Abraham and here he is saying well, she's a daughter of Abraham buddy and then in verse 17 it says when he said this all his opponents were humiliated but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing. And it's in that context, that's the story that leads into verse 18. Then Jesus asked, notice the then. This is coming from what has just happened. Then Jesus asked, what is the kingdom of God like? What shall I compare it to, he says. Is it really a place where donkeys are more important than people? Is it really a place where healing just happens six days a week and on the... Lord's Day, the Lord's just not into healing. That's something you need to come and hope will happen on other days. And this is what he says the kingdom of God is like. In verse 19 he says, It's like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his garden. It grew and became a tree, and the birds of the air perched in its branches. Uh, it's a very short parable. It's one verse... Um, it's not long at all, and yet, just like a mustard seed that grows into a tree, there's a lot packed into it. In fact, exactly like a mustard seed grows into a tree, there's a lot packed into it. That's the whole point, I think, of the parable. But before you get time to really digest that first parable, he then, in verse uh, 20, introduces um, as a second parable with a very similar question to the first question. This time he says, what shall I compare the kingdom of God to? And then he answers in verse 21 with the next parable. It's like yeast that a woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour until it worked all through the dough. Now, for some of us, we are sort of more farming. Like for Jesus, he's got a mixed audience. He's got people who would be working in fields. So he can talk to them about seeds that grow into trees with branches. But then he's also got people who don't do that. But instead, they might be at home doing domesticated chores. They might be doing things like making bread. And so he gives them a parable that would work for them. Jesus is doing a very good teaching technique if you... Um, it always helps to explain things more than one way. So he does that with one parable and he follows it up immediately with another one. It's like the yeast that a woman took mixed into a large amount of flour until it worked its way through the dough. So what is the point of the two parables? The first parable, just for a moment, the mustard seed, I think the point is this. There was a mustard seed. It's really, really small. It's a nothing, really. In fact, a mustard seed by itself, like if you put a mustard seed on your meal, just one mustard seed, it's not going to do much for you, is it? But there's something about a mustard seed that under the right conditions, this nothing through transformation can be something, be something of value and importance. I love the way Jesus just weaves into this. It's not just that it's a tree. It's a tree that has a purpose. Can you see that? 
In other versions, uh, in other places, Jesus talks about it more like a tree in which birds can nest and make their home. Do you remember that? It's the same thing. This is a tree that will provide shade. It will provide uh, protection. It will provide a home. Now, I don't know about you, but since I believe it's in 2016, they made a rule that said you could no longer throw things at brush turkeys. And so now we have more brush turkeys around, don't we? Have you noticed? We have a brush turkey that wants to roost in a gum tree behind our house. It's upsetting the dog a lot. Um, but birds need somewhere to be. And trees can do that. The second parable, what does it mean? Well, it's very, very similar to the first, isn't it? There's a small amount of yeast. It's a nothing. And yet yeast has this ability to infiltrate. Um, as you knead the dough, the yeast goes through the flour and the water, uh, the mix that is there, which produces the dough. And as it infiltrates it, then through the cooking process, um, the whole uh, of the dough will rise uniformly. There's an infiltration so that there can be a great rising. Now, it's really interesting that Jesus' has two examples, this one here is an example that even though it's a really short parable that begins and finishes in one verse, it's actually a parable about a really long process, isn't it? The process of planting something, seeing it grow to the point where birds can nest um, so we have a coachwood tree that we've planted. We planted the coachwood tree. The coachwood tree, it's, it's getting high now. It's probably about three metres high. We planted it because we were told that coachwood trees, that powerful owls will nest in them. At the moment, if a powerful owl nested in our coachwood tree, the coachwood tree would be bent over like this. So that's not time yet. It takes time. The interesting thing is the parable for the yeast is a much quicker one, isn't it? Um, it takes the time it takes to bake bread. And yet even then, if you have made bread by hand, you would know that there's still a process. You've got to allow it to rest. You've got to knead it again. You've got to allow it to rest. And that's the kingdom of God. There's a time element in there at some level. And can I just suggest for a moment that it doesn't always run to the time that we would like. It runs to its own time. And so these two parables have a meaning, but how do they connect with the context? I think it's fairly obvious. There was a crippled woman, and she was a nothing. She was very insignificant, very small. She was a burden, in fact. And then there was Jesus, and you put the two together, and there's a transformation. And you go from someone who's a burden to somebody who is praising God. I don't think there's something better that we could be doing with our time. And this is the kingdom of God. The way the kingdom of God brings something into a life that changes it and transforms it. I was thinking about how you could sum this up and maybe it's the kingdom of God is where potential is expanded through transformation from within. I was tempted to say the kingdom of God is where potential is realized but I think the thing with the kingdom of God is there's something outside that comes in that actually causes us as that we live and breathe and grow in the kingdom of God to become more than our potential. It sort of expands that through transformation from within. The question for you this morning, has the kingdom of God worked in you? Remember it has a time element and it can often be slow. So I want to encourage you because your immediate thought might be, well, I think I'm pretty much the same person I was five years ago when I was walking in the kingdom. We started the Inside Out course last Sunday and one of the things that it says in the Inside Out course was it's talking about spiritual formation and being changed and transformed by God. It says that we are changed without even realising it because it's a part of a slow journey that's day in, day out, step by step with the little decisions that we make about who we're going to be, who we will spend time with, who we will be the disciple of. 
So one of the things to link this into our mission statement is that we love because he first loved us, this idea of loving God. There is a loving God. His love transforms us. Uh, the kingdom of God is this force of love uh, that works in us and changes us so that we might actually become like a tree that has branches in which others perhaps find a place of peace or play, find a place to rest or find a place of shade. Now, I recognise with young people today that it's, it's not cool to throw shade. Okay, that's a negative thing. So we're talking about shade as being a good thing. Yeah, shade is good in the sun. The last couple of weeks, I've reminded us of Acts 2, 42 to 47, and that whole community of believers, these group of people who were following Jesus and were, I guess, this little place where the kingdom of God was starting to grow. I saw a, um, a description of that community um, this week, which said a community empowered to passionately pursue spiritual growth and authentic connections and meaningful service. This is who they were. The kingdom of God is a place that is different. One of the things it says about Acts 2, 42 to 47 is that they found the favor of all the people and God added to their number daily. That's what happens when you have branches that provide shade and provide a place for rest. That's what happens when you're formed and changed by God. It's what happened when Jesus was nearby and people's lives were influenced. Another thing that we looked at in the Inside Out course was we looked at a quote from Dallas Willard about discipleship, which links into this because this kingdom of God thing and it's being a daily walk um, and a daily decision to allow God to work in our hearts. Uh, Dallas Willard describes disciples like this. He says, a disciple is a person who has decided that the most important thing in their life is to learn how to do what Jesus said to do. It's to learn how to be like he was. That's what being a disciple is like. He goes on to say, disciples are simply people who are constantly revising their affairs to carry through on their decision to follow Jesus. There's a lot loaded in that sentence. Disciples, I like how he says simply, disciples are simply people who are constantly revising their affairs to carry through on their decision to follow Jesus. One of the things that I've discovered recently, walking alongside some people who have come to a time in their life where they realize that they have really, I guess, moved away from God. Um, and for some of them, it was over 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. And they've now come to a place where they've realized what has happened. It was that creep. Uh, each, dis each day making decisions, each day making decisions that just put other priorities in place instead of their connection with Jesus. We all have the opportunity to make those decisions every single day as to who it is that we actually do follow, whose kingdom we're choosing to live in. Decisions every single day. Dallas Willard is saying that if you're a disciple of God, then each day you're going to revise. You're just going to take stock. Am I, am I, yesterday, did I make decisions that were the decisions to stay in the kingdom of God, to walk closely? Did I actually allow space for God? Did I make some time to spend with him or did I just prioritize other things? I do this all the time, as in poorly, badly. <laughs> all the time I have this pressure. We all do, don't we? If your life is at all busy, there will be the pressure of things coming into it. And if your life is not busy, then there's always other distractions that come in anyway. Disciples are simply people who are constantly revising their affairs to carry through on their decision to follow Jesus. It's like today you need to decide, are you a mustard seed that's growing into a tree or are you something else? Each day, are you a mustard seed that's growing into a tree? Are you today going to connect yourself with Jesus in some meaningful way and allow him to work in you? so that you can be becoming who he is shaping you to be because that's what it is to be in his kingdom where he is the lord and he is the ruler these are confronting things 
And I sort of feel that usually I, I say it much more gently than this, but the question for each of us every day of our life is who is our ruler? Because we're all following somebody. We're all somebody's disciple. Today is a great day to make that choice. Well, that for me is Jesus. Just be aware that if you don't make the choice, you've made the choice. Life just tends to do that for us. So what would it look like for you this week to constantly revise your affairs to carry through on your decision to follow Jesus? What would that look like? To be the seed, the yeast, the love. Well, I want to encourage you to make space. That woman in that synagogue 2,000 years ago, I don't know why she was at the synagogue. I don't know whether, I don't know if she'd been coming to the synagogue for 18 years. In some ways, the context of what Jesus is saying, it would make sense that maybe she has been. She was persistent, perhaps. Maybe it was the first day she'd been there. But the bottom line is there was a hunger in her that drew her to the synagogue where she knew the presence of God would be represented in some way. She made a decision that morning that she would in some way endeavour to draw near to the kingdom of God. And praise God, she found Jesus who was able to transform her as she moved towards him. So I want to encourage you. The kingdom of God is where potential is expanded through transformation from within. You have not realized your potential. God's still working in you. I want to encourage you. You may not see how he has worked. You may want this week to find somebody you can ask who knows you well over a period of time and ask them, have you seen me grow in who I am in the kingdom of God? Often we're surprised at how other people view us and the changes they've seen in us. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for Jesus, your Son, and for who he is. We want to thank you for the way he loved all people. Indeed, it seems as though people each of us here have been his priority as he's given his life that we might live. Lord, perhaps today is the opportunity for us to have a new day, a new start, a new opportunity to be in your kingdom. Pray that you would help us to make that choice today, tomorrow, the rest of this week, this month, this year through the rest of our journey, that it might be a journey that's walked each day closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen.